So uh, the great follower of our channel, Nixon Master, or Nixon Master, depending on how you want to pronounce it, N-I-K-S-A-N Master, uh, really appreciates the obscure podcast we're doing. Some of the uh, second line players, literally, from the 1970s. And he brought up this guy. You see, he almost tried to kill John Ferguson once, you know, our great legendary uh, player and coach for the Habs and Jets. But this guy, when he was on his game, was a heavy goal scorer. But like he says, this is what he said in his comment, Nixon Master. Uh, he said, the only time the Blades made a front page of the LA Times sports section was when that handsome devil did something crazy, which happened at least once or twice a month. Thank you, Nixon Master, for doing my podcast for him, because that's what exactly I was going to say. Nice looking guy, but a nut bar times seven. See, see like uh, Kevin O'Leary. Now, the man they call Cowboy, Howard John Edward Cowboy Young, was born in Scarborough, Ontario, that great suburb, on August 2nd, 1937. By the time he left this world on November 24th, 1999, at a young age of 62, more stories were shared about this guy, probably, than Dave Schultz, Jack McElhargy, Tiger Williams, Randy Holt, and the other goons of the 70s uh, combined. Now, he first came to major prominence with the St. Michael's Midget Majors all the way back in 1954, and he also played with the Scarborough Scouts of the OHA B League that season. In 65 and 66, he was playing with the Kitchener Canucks of the OHA, eventually found his way to the Hamilton Tiger Cubs of the OHA for 57 and 58. Now, rem remind yourself when I say this, he first played in the WHL for the New Westminster Royals in the 59 uh, uh, season. Then found his way to Chagutimi Saguenay of the uh, the uh, Quebec uh, League. Now, he was playing mostly defense uh, at this time, but he would play wing on occasion. Now, 1960, he spent most of his season with the Rochester Americans, and he was using his Dukes to uh, great level. Uh, he eventually found his way to Detroit. Now, he broke into the, the Wheels lineup in 61 and uh, earned a reputation as one of the league's uh, toughest and most promising and most mentally troubled defenders in the sport. Now, he had a great natural skill, but his body checks were just out of this world. But he was very undisciplined, bone on and off the ice, uh, and a constant headache to the Detroit organization. My media pals in Canada tell me he would disappear for literally hours at a time, wouldn't meet bed check, was seen with several ladies, uh, you know, on the... Uh, out, in, out in public that weren't girlfriends, if you know what I'm saying. Now, he did have eight assists in his rookie season and led the Wings with 108 penalty minutes in only 29 games. In the playoffs, he appeared in all 11 games and helped uh, the Red Wings reach the Stanley Cup Finals when he scored uh, twice. Now, Detroit, a major problem in the early 60s was a lack of toughness. Because they had difficulty with, uh, after winning all the Cups in the 50s, Montreal taking over, they were losing toughness. Now, he did spend another season between the NHL and the minors before establishing himself as a regular in 63. Now, uh, that year he recorded 9 points in 62 games and set the league record minutes for penalty minutes, recording 273 to break Lou Fontenato's old record of 2002. Now, was he the number one goal in the NHL at that point? Yes. And his pugilistic exploits earned him a place on the cover of Sports Illustrated in January 1963. And when SI would give you the front cover, you must be doing something really, really good or really, really bad. Now, at this point, unfortunately, his alcoholism took over and uh, it reached a full-blown uh, problem. And despite his popularity in Detroit, the team shipped him to the Chicago Blackhawks in the summer of 1963, to basically, you know, uh, get rid of him. Now, uh, Young's problems followed him to Chicago, and the Hawks' patience ran out even quicker than Detroit's did. Midway through the 64 season, the team sold him to the LA Blades of the WHL, where our good correspondent had mentioned. There, he was one of the league's most feared defenders, as he led the association in penalty minutes in both his full seasons there, while contributing offensively from the blue line. Uh, very, very nice looking, very, very charismatic. He also tried uh, acting. 
It had a minor role in a Frank Sinatra movie, very popular at the time, called None But the Brave. So check him out on IMDb as well. Now, in 65, unfortunately, Young's life bottomed out, and he entered AA. After sobering up, he played in the ice show to marked improvement, and he finally began to harness his immense potential. He also improved his discipline on the ice and focused more on the game and less on fighting. Now, Young started the 67 season dominating the NHL with 22 points in the first, his first 29 games. Now, more impressively, the once volatile defender spent just 43 minutes in the penalty box. Impressed with his sobriety improved play, the Red Wings traded three players to get it to LA to get him back. Now, you're saying how can a professional team in the NHL trade with WHL? Well, the WHL was kind of the WHA of the 1970s. That's a whole different podcast. Now, back in the NHL for the first time in three seasons, Young played the best hockey of his career. In 44 games for the Red Wings, he recorded 17 points, including three goals, and with 100 minutes and penalties. In 68, he would spend another full season in Detroit, setting career highs with 17 assists and 19 points. And around this time where the Awe Young incident with John Ferguson allegedly occurred, where Young skate came very close to uh, knocking Ferguson out, there's different published reports. Uh, we still don't know if it was intentional or the fact it was a, it was a, a misinterpretation of rules by Young. Now, uh, dealt back to Chicago for 69, Young unfortunately began to show his age. Now, now 32, he slumped to just 10 points in 57 games and seemed to have lost his physical edge. He spent most of the following two seasons in the minors with, of course, an 11-game stint with the Canucks in 71 before retiring. Now, he took a year off from the sport, and a lot of people thought, hey, you know, his career is done. But he decided to sign on with the original version of the Phoenix Roadrunners of the WHL. Now, despite being 35 and having played defense for most of his career, he returned as a forward, which I think was a good fit for him, and was very successful. In 73, he scored 20 goals and 38 assists for 58 points. In 74, he notched 37 goals, which was 6 in the league, and 68 points, and was named a WHL first All-Star team. Now, in the 75 season, the Roadrunners jumped to the WHA, and Young stayed with the team through the move. Now, he was 37 at the time and playing top-level pro hockey for the first time in five years. Now, he recorded 15 points in 30 games before being sold mid-season to the Winnipeg Jets. And Winnipeg was reunited with his former Chicago teammate Bobby Hull and scored 13 goals in 42 games. He finished the year with 16 goals and 22 assists, again for 38 points in 72 contests. Now, when Young retired again in 75, he decided to return to Phoenix late in the 77 season. Now, nearly 40, he scored just one goal and four points in 26 games. He played uh, le- minor le- pro hockey for another two seasons in Phoenix and L.A. before retiring again in 79. He made yet another comeback in 86 with the Flint Spirits of the IHL, picking up an assist in four games, and an impressive feat at the age of nearly 50 in a league just a uh, uh, short notch b- below the NHL. So consider this, Gory Howe was still playing a constant shift at 50. He came out of retirement at age 50, but it was natural gifts. You can't teach hockey, ladies and gentlemen. You can teach football, you can teach uh, baseball, but you can't teach hockey. It's in you, the thighs, the upper body. Some players may be bow-legged, but are better skaters than a lot of uh, straight-legged people combined. Now, when he retired, he moved to Mexico, and where he owned a ranch and drove a school bus. He also worked again as an actor. In 89, he played an outlaw on the television miniseries Lonesome Dove, a very popular performance. In 1980, he portrayed Paul Posse in the movie Young Guns 2. And in 97, he appeared with Tom Selleck in the 1997 television fin- film Last Stand at Sabre River. So you have uh, uh, California, can- uh, he loved him in California. Loved him in Kitchener, loved him in Hamilton, loved him in Detroit, loved him in Edmonton, loved him in L.A. with the Blades, loved him in Rochester, loved him in Vancouver, loved him in Phoenix, uh, loved him in Winnipeg, loved him in Oklahoma City, loved him in Flint, and loved him in New York, where he played also for the slap shots at ACHL. So uh, an acting career was uh, was in the, in the cards, and that's what happened. So let's look at the, the totals, and are pretty impressive, ladies and gentlemen. NHL. 74 points in 336 games, uh, 6 points in the playoffs, 14 goals overall. 
WHA, 98 games, 42 points, uh, 17 goals in those contests. WHL, where he's most impressive, 266 points, 1,130 minutes and penalties in 394 games, and 30 points in the playoffs. AHL totals, uh, 57 points, 157 uh, games. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when you play a thousand pro games, give or take, uh, major pro, you got to be really, really good. And Howie Young was really, really good. You see, the Quebec media was on his back because that incident with John Ferguson was overplayed. He was there at first as an enforcer and evolved and a really good player. Now, you you look at the transition of his career. He only scored 10 goals in a season. And he's almost his first 20, 20 pro campaigns. And all of, a, uh, all of a sudden, he was playing the forward lines, getting a lot of points, getting a lot of recognition. And really, he, uh, he overachieved in the WHA because the WHA didn't have him in there to feel sorry for him. The WHA had him in there because he matched the toughness that was needed in the league at the time. So again, Howie Young, very, very underrated in Canada states. He's much more popular because he played mostly with uh, American squads. Like in, uh, in Canada, though, he is known mostly for being one of the biggest overachievers in NHL, WHA, and minor pro history. Because we thought these personal demons would eventually kill him. But when Howie Young sobered up, can you imagine what he would have done if he... He wouldn't fall into the bottle of it all those years. Like people like Bo Belinsky and uh, Mickey Lolich, uh, uh, excuse me, Denny McLean. Uh, you look at different players who were drinking. Some of the current enforcers over the last 20 years that got into drinking and drugs and ruined their careers. If Howie Young would have came up in the 19, early 1970s, he could have been an all-star in the NHL. He'd be, his name would be on the Stanley Cup already. But it's just unfortunate that it took him a while to really sink in how good he was. You have to believe in yourself in hockey, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe it was part of how young that didn't believe in himself. But he was always a he was always a person that was willing to be to his own drum, as we say, and that I have to respect. But uh, I've heard many stories about how young. I can't repeat them because I don't even think my lawyers would allow me to say that. And if I could repeat them, I wouldn't because it's better to live with the legend than die with lies. And if you tell the truth too often, people will forget that, you know, you got to embellish every once in a while. By the way, the story about Howie Young challenging the whole Montreal Canadiens bench, I uh, i have heard of it, but I didn't see it. But if there was a tape, it wouldn't surprise me. You think John Wincy got that idea by himself? I don't think so. Have a good day. Bye.